to the um, this applied in the transportation market. And this had to do with the best form of transporting oil, um, which is pipelines. Now, from early on in the industry, people had the idea that they could take the same kind of pipes that they used to transport water, and they could transport oil with them. Unfortunately, this was stopped. But it wasn't stopped because there was someone like Rockefeller who had a better product to offer. It was stopped by people who got the government to come on their side to stop the, or demolish these pipelines. So with the first pipelines that were built, um, the Teamsters, these wagon, wagon drivers who drove barrels very, very inefficiently, very expensively, um, they had this whole racket where they made a lot of money and pipelines came along and offered a much cheaper solution. These Teamsters literally tore down pipes. And since, they were, since the Pennsylvania legislature was in their pocket, they got away with it. So uh, they're, not, you know, they're not beating their competition by offering superior value. They're literally beating them by beating them. I mean, they're beating them physically. That's, that's how they function, and with, with the consent of the government, because the government should have come in. And the same thing happened with long-distance pipelines later. The railroads um, had the Pennsylvania legislature in their pocket, and the railroads didn't like long-distance pipelines because they would beat the railroads in terms of oil transportation. So what the railroads did is they, for a while, got this, the construction of these things blocked. So again, it's, 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 beat, it's competing by force, competing by superior value versus competing by force. There's this incredible distinction. And Rockefeller competes and wins by offering superior value. These people compete by employing the force, which they need ultimately from the government. Now, just to, get, to tell you how the Standard Oil story ends from its own perspective, it did not, after a while, it could not maintain its incredible market share. It had created such a sprawling market and so many opportunities that internationally its market share fell drastically, and even domestically, it set off all kinds of exploration. So just as the great athlete raises the bar and brings other people to a higher level, so the great company, so this so-called monopolist, brought competition to a higher level and dramatically expanded uh, the exploration of oil. So people went to California, Wyoming, Texas, Oklahoma, all of these places that later became major sources of oil. Standard Oil inspired this, but they, they couldn't keep up with it. So the idea that the Supreme Court or anyone else was needed to that Standard Oil would just keep its market share automatically. We've seen that's not true, but in fact, it declined without any government uh, involvement whatsoever. So when we, we think about, um, mon when we hear the term, you know, monopolize, we hear, you know, Ro Rockefeller monopolized these markets. It's, I think it's important with this language to learn how to translate it. So with, in the case of Rockefeller, monopolizing really meant he completely revolutionized human life by offering an amazing product at an unheard of price. And he did, it's basically two revolutions in human life. One is in illumination, in the light we have around us, and then the second is in transportation. That's what it meant for him to, quote, monopolize. So uh, to wrap up, this the guy we're talking about here, it's important to remember, he's the textbook example of why we need antitrust law, of why capitalism leads to destructive problems. This is the best case they have, and yet he's a productive hero. Now, you might think, well, maybe it's just an accident. Maybe you know, that's just an unfortunate coincidence. And in fact, the Supreme Court said something like that. Standard Oil got prosecuted, and people pointed out, you know, their prices all went down, and they made all these innovations, and the judge said, yeah, well, but, you know, we can't count on that, then, you know, they might have done otherwise. They could have jacked prices up. They just chose not to, as if Rockefeller suddenly is some benevolent guy who just keeps prices down for, to be nice. But no, this is not what's going on at all. What's going on is that the only way to succeed in a market is to offer something of value to customers. I keep, keep reiterating that, but that's, that's what's going on. There is no other way to succeed. So it's not just that he did dominate the market through superior production. It's that he could only dominate the market through superior production. And that unless he had been like the others who dominated temporarily through, through superior force, through invoking the government. 
So as a lesson to take, as two lessons to take away, the first is when you read about cases in the paper, I think it's important to ask yourself with these big companies and they say, well, it's a monopolist, it's dominating, et cetera. Ask yourself, is this company trying to offer superior value? Is this, is this a voluntary thing? Or is it actually using force to, to kick a competitor out of the market? Because that is a life uh, and death distinction. And the other thing I'd ask you to take away from, from the story of Rockefeller's is more personal. But, you know, in terms, of, in terms of just how we think of big business, which just has such a bad name, big business was an incredible innovation. And if someone can sustain a big business to the extent there's a free market. Now, unfortunately today, we have a lot, I'm sure this will come with the question period, we have a lot of big businesses that are really bad and that are really in bed with the government. Uh, and that's a really terrible thing that we should condemn. But to the extent that they become big and succeed through on a free market, they're doing something really profound and great. We don't read articles in Sports Illustrated or there's no business illustrated, you know, about all of these productive heroes and their stories, but the stories are just as inspiring. They're, they're just as amazing. So when you hear about big business and you think about it, if you see a real big business, think about Rockefeller, think about what he did and think that these people, you know, deserve our admiration just as much as any sports hero. And in a sense, much more because they're not just producing inspiration, which, which they all can, but they're literally you know, producing everything that keeps us alive and allows us to live as we are. Thank you.